Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a first impressions of an all natural brand. They're called Gather. They're based in America. Perfumer for Gather is a woman called Ananda. And she wrote to me in an email asking if she could send me some samples uh, to, just to check out and get my opinion on. She didn't even specifically ask if to review them. It was up to me. And that I was one of the few channels that seemed to be interested in natural perfumery. So of course I said, sure. I'll check them out and she very kindly sent me a bunch of samples so thank you Ananda for, for providing those for me. A lot of the materials that she uses in her perfume actually come from her own garden and she actually sent me some little samples of tinctures that she's made herself uh, from the garden including um, poplar bud, lavender tincture, uh, basil tincture white clover and rose petal wild rose petal so that's uh, that's cool that she actually tinctures her own um you know personal plants from her own garden so yeah very natural <laughs> there are a lot of samples to go through so i'm gonna do my best uh, she did send quite a, a lot including um a little kind of small travel spray so the little travel spray she sent me is called hearth and this has notes of balsam fir pine needles birch juniper smoke and soft tobacco and it's a five mil travel spray so this one when i first sprayed it i actually didn't like I'll, i have to be honest it's very smoky Kind of a little bit overwhelming but very dry it has this intense dryness with this kind of uh, fire smoke smell like a forest is burning down like imagine a pine forest on fire and the air has like sucked the moisture out of it very very dry very smoky uh, with these kind of piney elements woody green um, but it mellows so the, the the introduction was like overwhelming for me and like i was like oh, i can't wear this but it dries down quite nicely if you give it 20 minutes it settles down and it's quite nice as it dries down it's a bit more balsamic you get more of the kind of the tobacco pine it's just more resinous slightly sweeter and the the smoky element tones down and it becomes less of this kind of dry overwhelming feeling so this one is a brave choice and if you like smoky fragrances then the opening in this will uh, will be something for you <laughs> but it dries down uh, less challenging but the opening is like whew, a real big blast of coniferous kind of smoke um, but obviously very natural smelling and it does smell like you know like a pine forest on fire basically and once it dries down it becomes easier to wear and a, a bit nicer and a bit sweeter and a bit warmer and kind of resinous and green and uh, woody so that's the first one obviously it's a first impression so i'll do a full review later kind of more in depth but we've got so many samples here to go through that we'll, we'll, we'll get going i don't like all of them i'll be honest with which ones i like and which ones i don't like you, you know you just have to bear in mind my taste is quite limited and what I like in general is 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 not huge. <laughs> so the first one I picked up is called Blue Grass or Blue Grass, and the notes on the back here read Hay, Clover, Sweet Grass, Blue Grass, and Lavender. Um, each one comes with a little card, and this one reads Roll carefree in a clover filled prairie, unburdened with a tumbleweed and wild flowers in your hair. Leap over freshly baled hay and get close to the shapes of clouds. Lose track of time in the longest summer afternoon as you link stems of daisies into a garland. Distant fiddles, you sing hymns of the old south and the sun rays coax of the soft incense from the sweet grass braids. So with this one, I the, the first thing I smell is this sweetened hay. The hay feels like, and the sweet, it smells like dry grass, hay, uh, this clover smell and just a pinch of lavender 
and the lavender makes it a little bit sweet, a little bit spiced aromatic, giving it kind of a little bit of color to this kind of brown smelling hay. But very much reminds me of the countryside. I've, I've grown up in the countryside around farm fields that produce hay every year. And that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of hay fields in the summer. But with just kind of a sprig of, of lavender uh, just underneath the hay. It's fairly kind of minimalist. It's not hugely complex. It, you know, it smells of hay, sweet grass with a pinch of lavender. The notes that are listed on the back are literally what you smell with these fragrances, which I think is nice. The way that she presents them with the note breakdown that is how it smells. You don't need too much of an imagination to uh, to picture these fragrances. If it says it smells of hay, clover, sweet grass, bluegrass, and lavender, that is what you will smell. <laughs> so this one, um, definitely for a country lover if you like the countryside. The next one is called Melis, with notes of honey, beeswax, spices, rosewood, magnolia, citrus, and almond flower. So the two main kind of notes that I can smell in there is this smelling of beeswax with a sprinkle of spice and the spices smell more culinary like maybe a hint of cardamom a hint of nutmeg those kind of spices that you might cook with in the kitchen those are the spices that come to mind mixed with this kind of yeah like a waxy kind of beeswax smell just sprinkled in spice and a hint of floral Quite nice, again, um, minimalist. I, I feel like most of the compositions come across to me at least as smelling um, minimal as in the, like I say, the notes that they say is kind of what you get. Uh, there's no huge surprises. If you read the note breakdown, it gives you a very good expectation of what you're gonna get there, which I think is quite nice. That one I would say is completely unisex, as is the, the last two. Uh, they don't seem to have a gender, um, either or. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't scream one way out of the other to me. Next up is Samara, and this one uses kaffir, lime leaf, new rain, violet leaf, soft earth, and melon rinds, which is interesting. Um, so this one, I smell the melon, <laughs> like, a lot. That's weird. In a good way. I just don't expect to get that from a, a natural perfume, I suppose. Um, but you, you, you smell melon, there's, there's no doubt about it. Wow. It's, what can I say? It smells of melon. <laughs> I think maybe I get a hint of the lime leaf, although it's something I've never smelled, so I'm not too sure what that smells like on its own. But there is a leafiness, there is a freshness, and there is a kind of a soft, round, fruity melon note, which, again, completely unisex. Um, but if you like melon, check this one out. Um, that's pretty unique for an all-natural fragrance. Next one is Tea Season, and the notes for this one are black tea, bergamot, jasmine, vanilla, honey, and vetiver. This one feels quite soft, but to me smells kind of like a herbal tea. You definitely get the tea vibe, but it comes across like a herbal tea. It doesn't come across as a strong black tea. It's definitely, yeah, definitely herbal tea smell. I'm not a huge fan of tea personally in general, but if you like tea scents, that might be one you want to check out. If you like the kind of smell of herbal tea, this that will give you that, definitely. And again, completely unisex. I like that none of these so far smell either masculine or feminine. They're like completely gender neutral. Doesn't matter which, um, but if you like tea, that might be one you want to check out, tea season. Uh, the next one is called Basil. So, <laughs> with the notes are Basil, Neroli, Pettigrain, Tomato Leaf, and Pity Earth. So straight away, I'll, I'll be honest and say I don't like the smell of Basil in general, and I don't like Tomato Leaf. In fact, Tomato Leaf is one of my least favourite notes in perfume. So, I'll put that disclaimer on it, you know, that this one might not be my personal taste, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be somebody else's taste. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm sorry. I get a lot of the basil. There's something almost minty. I don't know where the mint kind of smell is coming from. It smells like dried green leaves 
with kind of a minty tone and fresh kind of basil sprigs. It's kind of a mixture of fresh green basil leaf with some kind of dark green dried leaf, which I think is probably the tomato leaf. This one is not my personal taste, uh, but if you like um, green kind of fragrances, more herbal, you know, basil particularly, um, then that might be for you. Not my personal taste, I'll be honest, that's not one that I would want to review personally, um, but I, I, I just don't like those kind of fragrances in general. So there's nothing against the fragrances, it's the notes specifically aren't my taste. But if you like that kind of thing, it might be one you want to check out, obviously. That one, again, doesn't smell like a gender. It smells completely, doesn't matter who wears it. Next one is Vetiver Cocoa with notes of vetiver, cocoa, and rose. So three notes listed for this one. Straight away, I smell cocoa and vetiver. Those are the two strongest notes. You get a rich uh, chocolatey, it's a dark chocolate with a earthy, woody vetiver. The vetiver is slightly nutty. A woody, nutty vetiver mixed with a big dollop of dark chocolate. From a first impression, the rose is a little bit uh, lost in the mix there, uh, but that might come out a little bit later. I get nuance, I get like a hint of a rose. I can smell it when I really kind of tune in and trying to find it, but the first initial impressions are dark chocolate vetiver. Um, this is cool, I like that one. And um, I would say that, again, is completely unisex. It doesn't smell masculine or feminine, but it smells colder weather. I wouldn't be wearing that in the summer, cold weather, autumn, winter, and that's quite cozy if you like chocolate fragrances, and yeah, basically to enjoy that one you need to like chocolate and vetiver, because that's, you know, the main combination, but it smells good, I like that one. The next one is called The Earth Laughs in Flowers, with notes of yuzu, ylang ylang, neroli, orange blossom, and elderflower. This one feels quite harmonious between all those, I think you get all of those elements and it's interesting, I can't compare it to anything, I've never smelled anything that, that this reminds me of. It's soft, it's slightly sweet. You get a little bit of the yuzu, you get a little bit of the ylang ylang, you get a little bit of the neroli, you get a little bit of the elderflower. It is literally a fairly even soft blend between them all. It's quite interesting, I quite like it. I think I'm tuning into the elderflower note. It's different, I quite like that. Again, completely unisex, it does not matter if you're a man or a woman. And I would actually say that's all season, spring, summer, winter, autumn, like it just doesn't matter. That's quite nice, that's one I would want to review. So the earth laughs in flowers, that's definitely one I'll review, I quite like the way that smells, so that's interesting. Next up is September 27, which has notes of clary sage, bergamot, lavender and rose geranium. This one personally, I don't like. It smells how the notes suggest, there's no point in me kind of repeating it. it. It does smell like clary sage, bergamot, lavender and rose geranium, that, that's, that's how it smells. Obviously incredibly natural. To me this smells more like an aromatherapy kind of blend rather than a perfume, that's how it comes across to my, to my senses. I would imagine, you know, someone that's doing kind of body massages with natural oils would be rubbing this into your back or something or maybe putting in a room diffuser that's how it comes across to me personally doesn't particularly smell like a perfume i'd want to wear more like an aromatherapy kind of smell so that one's not my personal taste the next one is called california canyon uh, with notes of white sage jasmine grandiflorum vintage dark patchouli so i'm not a huge fan of jasmine and i really don't like patchouli so i'm probably not going to like this one. There's something mentholated about this one as well. It kind of clears your airways like menthol. I can smell the jasmine, it's a little bit indolic. I smell this kind of um, mentholated freshness coming from it and this uh, patchouli note. I, I, I don't like that, I'll, you know, I have to be honest, um, but if you like those kind of notes, then you might like it. But to me, again, that one comes across like an aromatherapy blend, something that I would smell, you know, in that kind of uh, ballpark for aromatherapy massage oils and things like that. 
kind of comes across like that to me personally. The next one is simply called number 21, which has sandalwood, musk and rose, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this one contains an aged Mysore sandalwood. So I'll read the card for this one because I know it's a little bit more special. Creamy, undeniably soft woods dusted, dusted with cardamom and roses. This classic beauty of 21 year old vintage Mysore sandalwood, royal, sensuous and timeless. This elevated sandalwood perfume pays homage to the sacred tree and the history of perfume. An ingredient that gives blessings upon the altar as well as the smell that has seduced the marketplace. Sandalwood is among the most revered aromatics there is with its milky, sweet, luscious, woody curves. It takes the senses to a deep place of intimacy and comfort. And it's described as a woody floriental with notes of musk, sandalwood, cardamom, rose and hinoki. So actually the, the sandalwood in this doesn't come across as thick and milky and creamy. This kind of, it smells almost like a watery sandalwood with a cooling hint of cardamom and just a hint of, or maybe it's the rose that smells watery. There's something in it that smells fluid and watery and transparent. The sandalwood doesn't hit me in the face as a really thick, creamy Mysore sandalwood. I get a wateriness, a fluidity to it with a hint of a, a nice kind of cardamom, just an ever so slight trickle of rose. Yeah, kind of more like a watery sandalwood, like a light kind of sandalwood. I like this one, this one smells really good. The balance is nice between the the spice and the floral, again, completely unisex and all season, summer, spring, autumn, winter. It smells on the soft side, it doesn't feel like this one is too strong, it feels quite light. But that's one of my favourites so far. It comes across as quite simple, it doesn't come across as hugely complicated. It, um, it, it kind of feel minimalist, like I said at the beginning of the video but tastefully balanced that one. I like that, I would wear that myself. I think that smells pretty good. Next up is Vintage Violet, which has Violet Leaf, Jasmine, Sandback, Sandalwood, Iris Root, and Lavender. That's, that's another one that I don't like. I had the conversation with Ananda, the perfumer, and she told me that it's probably the Violet Leaf that I'm smelling. And I've never smelled violet leaf, so I have no idea if, you know, but I'm, I'm trusting that it's obviously the violet leaf that I, that I don't like. Now, it doesn't smell of violet candies, it doesn't smell of palmer violets, it doesn't smell anything familiar of what you would consider violet to smell like. This is really one you have to experience because I can't put into words how this smells. I personally don't like that one, and it's um, the violet leaf. If you're interested in kind of what real violet smells like, then check this one out. It, it would be, it's interesting, it's just not one that I could wear personally, and it's not my personal taste. But we'll, we'll move on to the next one, because I really don't know how to describe that. That's one you have to kind of smell to understand. What I try and put into words isn't going to paint you a picture of how that smells. Uh, the next one is Cacao Ceremony. So this one uses dark cocoa, palo santo, rose petals, and oud. I get a thick, dark cocoa note. It smells like cocoa absolute uh, with a streak of palo santo. I have palo santo oil and it's very unusual. To me, it smells like something like Atlas cedar wood, which is balsamic and milky and a little bit unusual and not what you expect wood to smell like but imagine um, Atlas cedar wood dipped in gasoline or petrol It has kind of a gasoline vibe with this milky balsamic woodiness that you get from Atlas cedar very unusual note And I get that mixed with this dark thick cocoa note. Those are the two notes that I can pick out Palo Santo is used in incense accords, 
So some people might say this smells of chocolate and incense. The rose again is subtle, but if you search for it, you can kind of identify it. Definitely for a chocolate lover. If you if you want to smell of chocolate and incense, um, then check out Cacao Ceremony. It's going to give you a really thick, lush, dark chocolate note. That one I like, even though I don't like Palo Santo on its own. Mixed with the cocoa, it's an interesting combination that's quite unique. But the cocoa is the main body of that one. So if you're really going to have to like chocolate for that. <laughs> uh, the next one is Forest Flora with notes of spruce, uh, resins, tree bark, pine needles, and green moss. I mean, it kind of reminds me of walking uh, again through a pine forest. This one's not on fire though. <laughs> this just, I, like, I live next to a lot of pine forests, so I walk the dog through pine forests quite often. And it, it just smells like pine needles and woods. Pine needle has kind of a, almost a refreshing, borderline lemony quality to it like it has a fresh kind of quality to pine needle almost in the same sense that frankincense has um, but slightly sweet and greened and resinous and this kind of has that cooling kind of green uh, balsamic kind of woody pine forest smell uh, which is going to definitely 100% remind you of walking through nature in a pine forest. So if, if that's what you uh, want to smell like, that's what this is going to give to you. So that's forest flora, you know, perfectly aptly named. And again, completely genderless. Uh, the next one is called Rainwater Rose. And this one has wild roses with raindrops. Rose Otto, which is basically just another word for rose essential oil. And Gentle Earth. So with this one, this is beautiful. I really like this one. This is one of my favorites. It's very pure in the rose. It's just a beautifully kind of translucent. I kind of get the watery aspect now. I didn't quite get that the, the first few times I experienced it. But yeah, kind of like a translucent, slightly watery rose. This is like, Roses in the morning with dew on the petals. The earth kind of element is very minimal. I kind of like to smell a little bit more of the earth. But really nice. I would 100% wear this, no doubt. Really beautiful. Yeah, I like this one. As someone who's a rose fan, I, I really got a taste for rose in the last uh, couple of years. I really appreciate this one, it smells great. Some men might find it a bit too feminine. Personally, I would wear it quite confidently. I think it smells great. It doesn't come across like a pink rose, it is a red rose. In fact, I wouldn't even say it smells like a rose absolute at all, actually. This might be... Uh, Actually, maybe probably, maybe her rose tincture because it feels lighter and the rose otto. Yeah, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't come across as a thick, dark, complex rose absolute. It's more, it's a lighter kind of watery, more transparent rose, but very beautiful. I really like that one. I could sit and smell that all day. <laughs> I think that smells great. If you like roses, Rainwater Rose, definitely check that out. Though, you know, um, there's there's a lot of rose fragrances, but there's not a huge amount of pure rose fragrances that have a big rose content because rose is so restricted in Europe. You can only use a very small amount of it, so we don't in Europe we don't really get really heavy rose fragrances. They're, they're mostly synthetic, bolt up, very little real rose. There's only a few houses using good doses of real roses, and you know you have to look to brands like these that kind of do that. That one really good. If you if you like rose, check that one out for sure. And the last one is called Falling. And this one is great. I really like this one. This is a spray, so I'm gonna um, spray it. I'll spray it on my hand. There's kind of warm ambery resins 
and warm kind of soft spices and ever so slightly sweet. It kind of reminds me of home cooked cookies and Christmas cakes and dried fruits and spices and biscuits. It's kind of slightly culinary, not completely gourmand, but definitely falling into that kind of territory. It's not overly sweet, it's not too sweet, that's why I don't really call it a gourmand. But it's resinous, warm, spicy... <sighs> yeah, really kind of comforting and warm. And again, completely unisex. Uh, <laughs> none of them strike me as smelling masculine or feminine, they all are completely unisex, which is surprising. Most, some, you know, with most bands we kind of find that some lean one way or the other. All of those, I can't think of any that kind of overtly smell one way or the other, apart from some men might find the rose, rainwater rose, a little bit more feminine. If that's how they view rose notes, some men have an association that it smells like a grandma. You might get that if you're one of those people, but for me it smells beautiful. And, and this one is another one that I really like. So, Falling is one of my favourites with number 21 and rainwater rose. Those are my three favorites that I will definitely re review and I'll review some of the others as well. The ones I don't like I'm not going to review because they're not my personal taste but like I say with this brand I, the, I feel like the transparency is excellent like what they list on the note breakdown is what you will smell so there's going to be no surprises if you if you know that you like these notes you will like the fragrance because that's exactly what it gives you. Hope you enjoyed the first impressions. Um, I'm gonna get into doing full reviews soon. If you've tried them, um, I, I don't know how many people have tried these, but if you have, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you all very soon with the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.